up. The YouTube is set up. Hi, guys. Hi, Blair. What's going on, everybody? Hi, Suze. How's everybody doing tonight? Who's drinking some no filter rose with me? Are you drinking drag me? I'm ready to mention it all. I stole Kim's goddamn house. Let me know what you're what you're sipping on tonight. Like I said, Zach, you've been busy. I have been very busy. <laughs> you're right. Yay, Blair coming on in with the first badge. Yes. I do apologize. I know I am a little late tonight. Uh guys, I'm what is it? It's oof, I'm 10 minutes late. I do apologize. It has been a very as as you mentioned, it has been a very, very busy week. Oh, I need to take a sip of some rose. Mmm. Mmm. Rose has never tasted so good, everybody. All right, let me pull up my notes so we can break down and finish out Bravo Book Club. Okay, YouTube stream is coming. Hello, welcome on in, everybody, on the YouTube. If you're watching this, it is probably Friday morning, but this was taped on Thursday night. So I apologize that you're not with me live, live, but I do promise I am in the live chat with you. If you're listening to this on the podcast, or actually you're not listening to it on the podcast because we don't broadcast these on the podcast. It's Bravo Book Club. It's not Thursday Night Live. Um, We will go live and that will go uploaded onto the podcast on Thursday. All right, guys, are we ready to, thank you guys for the badges. Quick badge shout out. Um, thank you, Blair, Blair, Blair. And thank you, Suze9067. Love you guys. All right, are we ready to break down the final three chapters of, yes, it is Tuesday. Sorry, it's been a long weekend and my brain is not fully there. Yes, Crystal is in the chat or is in the live because she's ready to break it all down. Okay, Bravo Book Club. Let's break down and finish out Dorinda Medley's Make It Nice. So we have chapter seven, eight, and nine. Let's start with chapter seven. Chapter seven is called Now What Again? This is right after Richard passed away. The chapter is heavily focused on Dorinda becoming a widow for the first time in her life and navigating life as a widow. And you kind of go through the, like all of the emotions that she's feeling of grieving and losing Richard and feeling lost. She talks about how they did everything together. And now, you know, it felt like she was basically losing half of her life feeling helpless as the lawyers and everybody treat, treated her as she was helpless, even though she really wanted to handle things. She's a very, I get the, the impression that she's a bit of a control freak. So I would imagine that, you know, it was very difficult for her to navigate the loss and try to navigate his business and the finances and learn all of that with all the lawyers being like, Ooh, poor little lady. So, she also talks about meeting John after Richard died, obviously, or not obviously, but apparently they had met John previously at the Chord Club, which is where they used to frequent and see John often. John ran into her and it was like, hey, Dorinda, what's going on, girl? How's Richard? And she's like, uh, read the room, homie. Richard died. And he's like, what? Richard died? And she's like, yeah, Richard died. And then he felt like an asshole and had to buy her a drink. She also taught, and she said that that's how they kind of just started talking again. And then eventually she was like, you know what? He's got good dry cleaning and he's a lot of fun. So let me just, let me date him. She talks about how she would feel awkward and she wouldn't want to spend the night at his house because obviously it wasn't home for her. She talks about how she brought him to the Berkshires house, which shows how from different rooms, uh, from different worlds that they are because she says that John was trying to like take pictures in the Bluestone Manor house and being like, ooh, look at this. And he was sending it to his friends and she's like, oh, John, don't be so weird. And John was just being weird. I agree with you, Blair, 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 Blair. Hannah's speech or yeah, Hannah's speech was just gut wrenching. Um, and I can only imagine what Richard meant to her. I mean, obviously she has her father, Ralph, but I can only imagine what Richard meant to Hannah. You know that Richard meant a lot to Hannah. She goes further into talking about when she was dating John, how she got another offer to join the Real Houses of Beverly Hills. She talked about how originally when she was with Ralph and they offered it to her, or no, she, sorry, she was with Richard and they offered it to her and she was like, uh, no, thank you. Thank you, next. Hi guys, how are you? Welcome on in. But she says that this time around, it felt like, it gave her a sense of independence. And on top of that, you know, she thought it was a sign from Richard that it was him telling her like, this is for you now. Take this, Dorinda, this is for you. Here you go. And then she like flew off like a dove into the, 
into the sky on Housewives. But she does explain Housewives being like playing a game of chess. You expect it to be like checkers, very easy, very, you know, transactional. But you do need to have strategy and you need you do need to be smart and you do need to know what you're doing. Then we get into chapter eight. Chapter eight is called Housewives. And she talks about how this is where she gets more into the fame of it all and being recognized for the first time when she would take her dog Lucy for a walk and they would go to Starbucks and she was on her way to Starbucks. And then everyone's like, oh my God, Dorinda, it's Dorinda from the Housewives and you're in your PJs. And she's like, oh my God, it is me, Dorinda from the Housewives and I am in my PJs. And then she realized she's not just Dorinda anymore. Now she's Dorinda from the Real Housewives of New York. She is a real housewife of New York and she owns it, baby. She said that there was a sense of how I, I sensed reading it that like I had a sense of happiness for her you know we went through this journey how long was Richard dead when she joined um good question I believe Richard was only dead a couple years it's been about 10 years and she was on the show for what five years so maybe about five it had been a few years I'm not exactly sure how much I want to say like four or five years um I had like a sense of happy three years. Okay, there we go. Lee Lee came on into it. It was only a few. Yes, Lee came on in. Oh, um, that should have been a, a a quiz question. We will get to the quiz at the end of this. I had a sense of happiness in reading this chapter and seeing her join Housewives because for me, I was like, we watched her move away and have to get reacclimated into living in Hong Kong and then going into London and building her life in London and then seeing the end of her marriage and then seeing her just have to like start over after her divorce and then start over again after Richard's death. I was like, yes, Dorinda, you do deserve to be happy. You do deserve this Real Housewives gig. And yes, you better make it nice. So I felt like she deserved this reading the book. Obviously, you know, different, you know, uh oh, is everybody tuning in because they think I'm going to talk about the Ronald Richards stuff? Maybe I will at the end of this. Maybe I'll have a little more wine. But I was proud of Dorinda. In this chapter, I was like, yes, I'm rooting for you, girl. I love you, girl. She also talks about how Carol was the one that actually named it Bluestone Manor in her first season on the show. She goes further into talking about how she really wised up her second season. And she's like, yes, I am going to play chess and I am going to work this to my advantage. She details all of her iconic moments. I made it nice. Uh, clip, clip, clip. All of those moments. She recaps it, which I thought was kind of fun. But I also wish she would have given us a little more. Like, I wish she would have given us like a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff more than just like brief recaps. Like, I wanted her to really give us some dish. She did say how she knew all the housewives and that's how she got it. Yeah, she's known, she knew most of them prior to joining the show. She was friends with them. Like Ramona, she'd known for a really long time. Sonia, she'd known for a really long time. And if you watch the earlier seasons of Housewives, you will catch that she is in a lot of the background scenes. Fun fact. She talks about the fish room and how the fish room originally belonged to her son, Aiden, which I thought there were a lot of those like fun little tidbits. But again, I wish she would have like really got into a lot more of the housewife stuff. She talks about being on pause. She says that it gave her a lot of clarity and it, the show itself just made her fiercely independent and incredibly aware. And I think that that's good. I was like, again, I was very happy to like reach this point in the book with Dorinda, which moves us into chapter nine, which is the final chapter of the book, Make It Nice. And she talks, she reiterates the symptom of um, the sentiment, sorry, of staying firmly rooted, remembering where you came from, being honest and transparent, which is what we love of her. And she says that that's what she attributes to the fandom that she has built she talks about still having fears, which I think is really natural and human. And I'm glad that she admitted that, especially after losing Richard. Maybe she will get into Roni in another, in another book. I don't know if she will get into Roni in another book. I see her second book probably, or her future book being like a, a make it nice entertainment book, like how to set a table, how to, you know, how to prepare for a dinner party, all of that stuff. Did she ever talk about her drinking? She actually doesn't address that in the book, which I find interesting. I'm so I'm glad you actually brought that up because she does not address that in the book at all. Um, 
how she also talks about how many times in her life she's had to like rebuild and start over, which I loved and appreciated because I feel like a lot of us have that. Like we have so many of those moments that we think are going to break us, that we think are going to set us back or where we think this is the end. I owe all this money or I spent all this money or I lost this relationship that I thought was the one. And, you know, she continued to rebuild herself and you got to give props to the girl. Props to the woman. She's not a girl. She's a woman. Did she talk about the drinking though? Yeah, I wish she would. That's what I mean, that I wish we would have gotten a little bit more into some of the tea and a lot of this stuff, which we didn't, but that's, you know, tis what it is. So before we get into quiz and, and I get more into the Q&A and stuff, I just want to read this closing, one of the closing paragraphs in the book that I really loved and considering everything that happened over the weekend and considering the climate that the world is in right now, I just think this is a really important sentiment to nail home. Dorinda writes, for all of you who are going through hard times, I'd say the same thing I said to this woman, which was a woman that reached out to her that she that reached out to her in an email that she ended up writing back. She says, keep going. Making it nice doesn't only mean presenting a beautiful facade. It's not only about decorating and cooking. It's about all the work you put into it. It's about all the obstacles you overcome to get the part to get to the part that is beautiful. Remember, success isn't measured by your achievements. It's measured by how, how you handle the ups and downs of life. As you go forward on your path, keep your head up. Do what you believe in. Tell the truth. Be transparent. Stay strong. Learn from your mistakes. And keep trying no matter what. Boom. Mike dropped Dorinda Medley. If you guys have not bought this book, I know it was fun for us to recap it, but I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Make it nice by Dorinda. I just learned so much about her and I loved going through the chapters of her life. All right. Shall we get into quiz time? What are we going to give away? Goosebumps. Thank you for that. It's important. I like, here's the thing. I always, and this is what I will say. Like, we'll, we'll get into some of the stuff that happened over the weekend. What I will say, and I, I kind of said this a little bit on Instagram on, on the stories is that like, listen, I'm human. I'm human. I make mistakes. I got caught up in the hype of everything with the Twitter bullshit. Um, with Ronald Richards. And then when his wife jumped in, I was like, okay, homie, let's play, let's do this. And then I realized like, I got so caught up in that moment. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, really, this is not what I'm here for. This is not like the name calling and the picking apart people's appearances. I mean, I didn't pick anybody's appearance apart. My appearance was picked apart, but I just, I realized like, this is beneath me and I'm not gonna continue. I mean, maybe I'll, you know, I like to get a little shady, but who cares? Drag the clown. I mean, listen, you know, I love a good moment. You know, I love to get dragged and I know how to drag as well. So I get caught up in the moment sometimes. And then I realize what the fuck am I doing? You know, I'm still going to hold people accountable. That's not changing. I will still continue to hold people accountable. Um, yeah. You always keep it classy and you always keep it cute. Ah, thank you. New follower. Love, love, love your page. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you too. Love you guys. Rescued Boris. We'd love a good shade. You know, I always bring some good shade. Always can, always will. Shade is my superpower. You didn't start it anyway. Did I? I don't know. I don't think I started it. I definitely ended it, but I don't know if I started it. When people talk shit, drag them. I will. And I did. Listen. Homeboy's wife tried to come for me on YouTube and I was like, mm, sweetie, let's not play. Because if you want to play, like I kept you out of this because like I thought, you know, going after other people's, you know, spouses is, is a little unfair. But when you it walked yourself into the party, when you weren't invited and you walked into my YouTube channel, and you started trolling up in the comments, sweetie, you want to go, we can go. And I can mention it all. Trust me, if there's one thing the people on the internet are good at, not myself, but the information that I've gotten from them, if it's one thing they're good at, it's digging up some dirt. I got all the dirt. I want to know who's paying her Amex bill. Actually, I know who's paying her Amex bill, but I want to know if it's from personal finances or company finances. Oh, I just went there. Shade. Okay, let's do Bravo Book Club, shall we? Tell them they play stupid games, win stupid prizes, you deliver. Tell, who does stupid games and stupid prizes? I like the prizes that I give away and the quizzes that we do. I think you're referring to the Ronald Richard stuff. But 
Okay, let's do <laughs> let's do quiz time. Um, and then I will let the winner decide whether or not they want a no filter cap or a Liddy City tank top. Fuck around and find out. Oh, I did. I know all the tea. I got all the tea. I wasn't going to spill the tea because I was like, what is his wife has? What is? Yeah. What does his sugar baby have to do with any of this stuff? She incited herself into the party. Yay, Crystal. I'm glad you got your T-shirt, your tank top. I will. You should be getting your hat next. Crystal, are you going to reign supreme? <laughs> guys, spill. Okay, guys, we will. Maybe that'll be part of a future deep dive. Um, no. <laughs> maybe that'll be part of it. Again, I think that, you know, spouses are off limits, but when you insert yourself into the drama, don't spill your wine. Oh, honey, it's on the can. It's on all of the cans. I may spill the tea but I will never spill my wine. I'm drinking wine, so we will see. Love it. Okay, quiz time for Dorinda Medley's book. Let's get into it. Question number one, are you guys ready? I need to know, is Crystal going to reign supreme? Because Crystal comes in every single week and she is just smoking all of y'all. Are we ready? Crystal, are you going to win? Professionals never spill. Mm, depends on the professional. Depends on the profession. I'm a professional tea spiller. He is loving it. Did that attorney agree to be on the podcast? Which attorney? I do have Elisa Miller, who is the current Girardi Keys bankruptcy trustee. I have her former partner that's on the podcast tomorrow. So tomorrow morning on YouTube and on all the platforms, that interview is going to come out and we get into the bankruptcy of it all. We get into how everybody's getting paid, what their percentages are. Oh my God, is he still going off on Twitter? Oh my God. Um, it did Ronald, oh, did Ronald Richards agree to appear on the podcast? No, he did not. And I think it's because I asked him to donate a percentage of his proceeds. God, fuck you guys. I wasn't going to talk about this. And now you got me talking about this. Well, I guess you're getting the exclusive because everyone thinks that we're talking about Bravo Book Club and nobody knows that I'm here spilling some tea. Um, so yes, I did challenge him. He wanted to do a one-on-one -on -one, and he kept asking for a one-on-one. -on -one, and I was like, no, I don't want to do a one-on-one. -on -one. I have ethics. I have morals and I don't think it's responsible to give you a platform right now. And I also think that it is very important for people. Fuck, we're really getting off topic, but I do think that it's important for people to remember people, meaning other people with the platform, whether it's a YouTube channel, a podcast, a media outlet, we will do quiz time. We'll do quiz time momentarily. I just want to get this out. Um, it's important that we use our platforms responsibly. And I want people I, like I should not be the only one to hold him accountable. We should all be holding him accountable and not giving him a platform when he uses it recklessly. And so I hope that the other podcasters and YouTubers and social media influencers out there, they were watching. Trust me, I can see who watches my stories. So I saw all y'all watching and I'm hoping that you learn from this and will continue to hold people accountable in all of this and not give them a platform when they misuse that platform and spread speculation versus fact, because you have to get to the motivation of what is the point of spreading speculation if it doesn't actually solve the case, if it doesn't actually do anything. I, listen, I fell on the sword this week. I looked messy. I, you know, was the one getting hit at from all of his followers on Twitter. I was getting all the names that he was calling me. He was calling me um, Nut Zach. His wife was calling me Nut Zach on YouTube. So I took the hits and I took the punches and I'm still standing. I didn't need no social media breaks or anything. Like I'm still here, sweetie. I'm still going to wake up. I'm still going to do my job. I'm still, you know, I wake up and I'm still hot, blonde and unbothered. Okay. But what I'm saying is I hope that people learn from all of this and become more responsible with their platforms. Um, I forgot the original point that I was trying to make, but oh, the, I, yes, about in response to did he respond? I said, yes, I'll give you a one on one on my channel if you agree to publicly say that you're going to give some of your a percentage of your commission to the victims, like take your cut and give the people that need that 
money. It's their money. They're the ones that are entitled to it more than you are because it was their money first. So I did, I did put that out there and I said, fine, I'll give you a platform on my, on my channel. I'll give you an interview one hour unedited. Let's go. Didn't respond to that, but he did then kind of steal that idea. Um, in my opinion, he stole that idea and then went to Erica and said, hey, Erica, if you deliver your 25 million within the next, I think it was what, like 10 or 11 days. Don't quote me on that. I'm going based off of memory because I wasn't prepared to discuss this, but now we're talking about it. But he then went to Erica and said, hey, Erica, I'll donate 10% or I'll give, I'll match 10%. There was something about a 10% that he said he was willing to match or give or do something if she turned over her finance or the, her 25 million. He, I think it was for every hundred thousand she gave back, he was going to give 10% or something like that. Or he was going to match 10%, but she had to do it within a, a within an amount of time, within I think 11 days or something like that. Which to me is also like, but this is an ongoing lawsuit. It's an ongoing investigation. If she just forks over money, first of all, does she even have 25 million? Because what you've shown us so far is that it was 25 million in value, 25 million in expenses that were paid via uh, like Amex bills that Girardi, that Tom was paying for with Girardi keeps money, not necessarily a, a lump sum transfer. So does she even have 25 million just sitting in the bank? Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely that there's just 25 million in the bank that she can be like, okay, Ron, here you go. Here's the money. It's an ongoing investigation. It's a lawsuit me asking him to donate his fee and come on my podcast, which is what he requested. I didn't want him on. He requested that. That's not a, he can do that. Her just cashing over 25 mil. Come on. How realistic is that? Let's be real here. Um, it's not realistic. And I think he knows that it's not realistic, but he saw how, I think he saw how much people reacted to me making him that offer on Twitter that he was like, oh, let me take a page out of that book and let me do that to Erica. Knowing that there's no way she was just gonna, like, there's no, like, there's just, should she? Yes. Is she going to? No, it's an active investigation. It is an active lawsuit. His job is to investigate that she even owes that 25 million, which he has yet to prove. He has yet to make his case. So he's asking her to give money that he has yet to even prove is owed to the estate of Tom Girardi or to the estate of Girardi Keys. Anyway, I digress. He should do those things anyway and donate his commission. I don't think he should donate all of his commission. I think people should get paid, but he should donate a portion of his commission. He's playing games. It's disrespect to the, to the victims. I agree. I agree. Anyone know if he is the same guy that went on Heather's podcast? Yes, he is the same guy that went on Heather, Heather's podcast. He's done many other podcasts. Hopefully, Heather, like I said, Heather has a platform. Heather gave him a platform. Hopefully she uses that platform more responsibly moving forward. I like Heather. I like her show. I want her to be more responsible. I want everybody with the platform. I'm not calling out anybody specifically, but I'm just saying all of them, all of us, I am in them. All of us need to hold him accountable and stop giving him a platform if he's going to use it recklessly, which we saw with the Radar Online example. Okay, let's get into quiz time because we have really digressed. I agree. I want Ron to do his job. I want Tom to pay his bills and I want Ron to do his job. Okay, quiz time. Are we ready? Crystal, are you ready? Blair, 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 Blair. Are you ready? Have your books ready because we're getting into quiz time. Make it nice by Dorinda Medley. Let's go, homie. Who's going to win tonight's? Who's going to win tonight's quiz? What question should he have asked? Should she have asked him? Um, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Um, but it's not a matter of what questions should be asked. It's the fact that when we see that the, that he's giving speculative information and not facts, and he's continuing to do many press interviews, and that becomes the priority. Then at some point we have to say, "Hey, focus on your job. Your priority is not doing my podcast. Your priority should be on doing your job and finding the money for the victims." Boom. Okay. Uh, okay, first question from Make It Nice. Are you ready? Question number one, how long were Richard and Dorinda Medley married? How long were Richard and Dorinda married? Who's going to answer it? How long were they married for? Uh, 
um, while you guys answer that to respond to whiskey and wangs, you're asking for their opinion. Yes, you are. Uh, Lee got the answer correct. It is six years. That answer came in first to respond to you, whiskey, about um, people giving their opinions when you interview them. Yes, I agree. However, it's an active investigation that he's currently working on. So his opinion doesn't necessarily matter unless like, he should be focused on proving that opinion correct. And then once you've got all the facts and you have it all together, then go and do the podcasts. Okay, Lee, you got that, uh, you got that answer. Lee, come on, Lee. You got this, boo. You got this. Okay, Lee, you got the first point. Are we ready? Question number two, because the, the, the correct answer was six. They were married for six years. What was one of Richard's surprisingly favorite stores to shop at? What was Richard's surprisingly favorite stores to shop at? Crystal, you're supposed to beat me. <laughs> Kmart, boom, rescued Boris, got it. Hang on, rescued Boris, boom, rescued Boris, got it. I love, I feel like you guys are on Kitson, Target, I love it, you guys are hilarious, thrift store, oh, I love you guys, you make me laugh, oh my gosh, you guys are too fast, I know, trust me girl, they are on it, second D, so, oh, Suki D, Inton, Dinton? Suki Din T N Suki Dint in 2018. Yes, they are too fast. Dollar Tree, I love it. I love it, Box Boy Rich. I love the shade. Okay, next question. What was the club Dorinda met John at? What was the club Dorinda met Job at? What is? Lord, someone said Kmart. It is Kmart. That was the correct answer. The correct answer was Kmart. Core Club, boom, Rescued Doris is coming to play. Yes, a oh, Rescued Boris, sorry. Rescued Boris is coming to play. Yes. Guys, you gotta be quick. Gotta be quick. Oh, Core Club, yes. Core Club is the correct answer. Rescued Boris, got it. The Regency, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Regency. Okay, rescued Boris is in the lead. Lee has one point. Boris has two points. Are we ready? The club, I'm dead. The Regency, I love the, the whoever the whiskey. The Regency, I want to give that the point because that's such a brilliant, hilarious answer. Okay, next question: What other housewife? Okay, which other housewife? did Dorinda appear on TV with during her first promo appearance for Real Housewives of New York? When she was doing promo, which other housewife did she appear with? Who was it? Not Carol. Not Ramona. It was not Carol or Ramona. I'll give you guys a hint. Ooh, boom, rescued Boris came at it again, Teresa. That is correct. It was Teresa Judice from the Real Housewives of New York. Boom. Boom. Boris, only way in. Rescue is killing it. Wow, Rescue's like boom, boom. boom. I think Rescue's about to take it home. Three points for Rescue. Y'all are sleeping on the job. Blair, 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 what's going on? Gossip in a glass, what's going on? Crystal, what's going on? You guys were the front runners and you guys are lacking tonight. Oh, guys, I'm rooting for all of you. Okay. Next, this one's an easy one. Do you mean New Jersey? Yeah, from Real Housewives of New Jersey. Yes, Teresa Judice. Dorinda did her appearance with Teresa. Shamara. Next question. Are you ready? Dun, dun, dun. Teresa is from New Is Teresa from New Jersey? Yes, Teresa is from New Jersey. So Dorinda's first promo appearance was not with a New York housewife. It was with Teresa, who is from New Jersey. They did it together. I concede. My boy, Ollie, you concede. Come on, you got this. 
This is an easy one. Are you ready? Who named Bluestone Manor? Who named Bluestone Manor? Easy one. We may have even mentioned it last week too. Boom, Lee got it. Lee's coming to play. Lee's like, uh-uh, no way, Jose. That Liddy City tank top is mine. Carol, the correct answer, yes, is Carol. Ooh, I wonder, what is the correct spelling of Carol's name? Because we have two spellings in the live chat. Which one of you is right? Um, okay, yes, Carol did name Bluestone Manor. Next question. Lots of love from Canada. Aw, hi, Haley. Thank you. Lots of love right back at you, boo. Next question. There are only two left. Lee, you have a chance to come in and take out Boris. Rescue Boris. You have a chance to take it home. Ansley, welcome back, Ansley. How you doing, boo? Okay. Who did the fish room originally belong to? Who, to whom did the fish room originally belong to. We obviously know Luann didn't want to sleep in the fish room, but who did? Who did want to sleep in the fish room? Monique, I love it. Adam, who's Adam? Aiden, yes, Aiden. Adam Carroll's boyfriend, Adam? Aiden. Um, LV Knight's girl. LV Knight's girl got it. Ooh, LV Knight's girl's like, mm -mm, I'm not giving it to Boris. LV Knights girl. Boom. The correct answer is Aiden. Uh, love, lots of love to you. It's 9 p.m. It's 9 p.m. and I have to be up in five. Oof, get some good sleep, girl. Get some rest. Sending you love. Hi, Mimi. What's going on, boo? Rescue is fast tonight. Rescue is fast tonight. Rescue's ready to in it to win it. Okay, last question. This is an easy one. Y'all shouldn't even need to check the book to know this one. Are you ready? The final question of the night is, what is Dorinda Medley's maiden name? What is Dorinda Medley's maiden name? Um, did the, no, it looks like on my screen, it was the order of who got Aiden was LV Night's Queen and then Blair, 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 Blair. And then Chow Britt said her stepson. Gossip in a glass, Mina. I don't even see. Where is Boris's answer? I don't even see Boris's answer for the last one. I don't know if Instagram is messing with me. Go rescue. Yeah, I don't see that rescue even answered the last question. Instagram may be fucking with me. I'm double checking. I'm double checking. Nope. I see Monique. I see Adam. But I don't see Aiden goes to LV Nightscrawl. All right. Um, last question is, what is Durant? Sinkala is correct. Correct. Sinkala is the correct answer. And it goes to Gossip in a Glass. Gossip in a Glass gets that last one. So Gossip in a Glass got one point. LV Knight's Girl got one point. Lee got two points. However, Rescued Boris won with three points. Wow, Crystal. You didn't even get a point tonight, girl. You can't, you got both, you won both weeks last time. You won last week and the week prior. Crystal, I'm a little disappointed in you, girl. I'm a little disappointed in you. I'll leave and enter all the time if she seems slow. Yay, rescue. Rescue Boris won. Rescue Boris Vaughn. Rescue. Be sure to DM me. DM me after this rescue so I can get DM me your address, your shipping address, where you want the way. Uh, and let me know, DM me your shipping address and whether you want a Liddy City tank top or a no filter cap. Let me know. It's a black cap and it says no filter with Zach Peter. Or I'm sure you've seen the Liddy City tank tops on Instagram. It's a fun tank top that you can have when you're, especially since it's fucking hot right now, you can have that while we're um, drinking some No Filter Wine, available at nofilterwine.com. Holla. I thought it was a fan. Appreciate the love. Yes, rescued Boris. Get it, get it, boo, get it. Let's give rescued Boris a good shout out. I'm glad we started this book, so much fun. I am too. 
I thought this was a great book. So it looks like the consensus is for next week, the next book we're going to be reading is Pretty Mess by Erica Jane. I'll be honest, I was a little torn about it because I'm like, do we want, do I want to encourage people to buy her book? I mean, she does have a a possible $25 million bag she's going to have to pay back. Hopefully some of these book sales can help pay that back. However, at the same time, as somebody that has written and published four books myself, my last book came out with, uh, or was later sold to Simon & Schuster, but that came out in 2014. Um, So I saw your Amazon storefront is up. Yes, the Amazon storefront is up. It is amazon.com slash store slash Zach Peter. So amazon.com slash store slash Zach Peter. You can shop the books there. I'm also going to be uploading a lot of the beauty and wellness products we see on the shows in there as well. So as we're seeing them, I will be sure to post them. I'll do a whole Instagram highlight. That way we can just swipe up and shop all of these different products in there. So yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, The people need their money. Promote that shit. I agree. The people do need their money. Um, And like, look, that was the demand. I polled Facebook. I polled Instagram. That's the book that everybody wants to read. It's natural in the sense that that's what we all, can you buy credits for Audible? Um, I believe so. I believe so. Uh, I believe it's also part of the storefront. So yeah, we, the book everyone voted for, like I said, I recommend if you can borrow it from a library, if you have a friend that has a copy that wants to loan it to you, if you have a copy already that you just want to recycle and read. Um, Great question in terms of how many chapters for next week. How many chapters is the book total? Let's find out. Go to Amazon and let's see how many chapters the book total actually is. And we will decide on the number of chapters per week right now while we're live. Erica. Jane, pretty mess. It's expensive to be me. Eh, eh. But yeah, I mean, listen, she's got a hefty, hefty bag she's going to have to pay back. Do I think she should pay it back? She spent the money and the money wasn't hers. Okay, so it's really interesting. So let me give you guys some tea about tomorrow's interview. I have on uh, David M. Goodrich. He's an attorney. Specialty in the bankruptcy. Oh, shit. Y'all are really reading this shit. I'm dead. Please read a paragraph from the first chapter. That's the whole point. We're, we want to break it down. So let's let's break it down. You know what I mean? Like, let's let's do it. Let's talk about it. Let's mention it all. Let's pick it apart as we're watching it break on the show. OK, so somebody said it's 15 chapters. So 15 chapters. How many chapters do we think is three chapters doable? Three times 15 would be five weeks. That'll probably get us through the season of Beverly Hills. If we do three chapters a week, multitasking skills are amazing. Listen, I've had a lot of practice. So if we do, she have a ghostwriter like Carol? Um, I believe she does. It's uh, Brian Moylan, the one who wrote The Housewives. He wrote this book for her. Or will she like would detail the stories and then he would refine them in the book. I hope that podcast reads memoir reviews it. it. That podcast that reads memoirs reviews it. Uh, detectives, the only thing fake about this chapter of my of my leg. The only thing fake about this chapter is my leg. That's funny. Late to the game. Yes, three is ideal for me. Okay, so we'll do three chapters. We'll break it down over the course of five weeks. So for next week's book club, you can go and order Erica's book on Amazon tonight. The Amazon storefront is up. I will post the link to buy the book in stories. So you can order it, have and read the first three chapters, and then we will break down the first three chapters in next Tuesday's live, same time, 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Eastern. Boom. We will talk then. All right. I'm going to wrap up the YouTube here, but if we want to chat a little more on Instagram... I may stay a little longer, or I may do an after party on my personal account, which we've done before. Maybe we'll do an after party on the personal account over at Just Plain Zach. So I'll wrap it all up here, and then at Just Plain Zach, we'll, we'll, we'll dish further. And I'll, I'll do a Q&A and answer any questions you guys have there. I won't save it, so you either catch it live or you miss it all. 
Thank you guys for, for tuning in to Bravo Book Club. Thank you for reading Dorinda Medley's Make It Nice. This is available on the Amazon storefront if you want to support the podcast. I'm not asking you for any money, but if you want to buy the book, a percentage of that, like an affiliate link, does come to support the podcast and support me. I never like to ask you guys for money. As I always say, I don't put out my Venmo. I don't put out my cash app. If anything, I just ask if you want to enjoy the wine, which I've been very transparent about. I don't make a ton of money off of the wine. The wine is really just an opportunity for us to connect on Housewives, which we all love. It's really fun. It's really Instagrammable, which was the design for us to be able to watch these shows together, sip some wine together and have a lot of fun. Rescued Boris, be sure to slide into my DMs. Give me which what, what uh, merch item you want. I may be bringing merch back which merch item you want and your shipping address. But thank you guys for tuning in. You can follow me personally at Just Plain Zach. I'm going to do a, a, a live right now over there. Uh, follow the podcast at No Filter with Zach. Be sure to subscribe. New episodes. We do news breakdowns every Monday. Wednesdays, we do unfiltered interviews. And Friday, our Thursday night lives get uploaded. We tape them every Thursday night. They, they get uploaded on Friday. I'm trying to refine them so they feel a little more podcasty and less live-y. But it's fun. You know, we chat, we go back and forth. I do Q and a, I spill a little more tea. And so it's just a good opportunity for us to be able to have a dialogue and back and forth. Whereas I know Mondays and Wednesdays, it's a lot of just me talking or me talking to other people. Occasionally I'll pop into the comments and respond there, but this is just more of a fun and positive way. Cause we don't get all the trolls in the lives. We only get the trolls in the comments to do that please leave me a five-star review on iTunes or just a good or whatever, an honest review on iTunes. I always appreciate them. They help the show. They help build the show. They really matter. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Love you. Talk to you. Uh, podcast episode drops Wednesday. New live drops on Thursday. It'll be re-uploaded on Friday. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.